Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to share with you my top 10 best tips for creating a photo book. Before I start, let me remind you to subscribe to my channel if you like watching my videos and also check the notifications button if you don't want to miss any of my new videos. Now that the coronavirus is forcing most of us to stay at home, I think many of you think it's you know, finally time to make your first photo book because now you have time to do it and, you know, it's one of those things that you can kill time with. Even if you're a seasoned photo book maker, you might still find this video helpful. I've been making photo books for the past 10 years or so and based on that experience, I collected 10 of the most common topics and questions that need to be answered when making a photo book, especially your first one. So let's dive in. Number one is choosing the book format and company. So many times I edited photo books for hours and hours and then when getting to the checkout process I realized that you know I didn't pick the right format or I found out about another photo book company who makes a nicer book or the same book at a better price. So make sure you do all your research before getting into the editing process because especially if you're a beginner you might take longer to make a photo book and you don't want all the time to be wasted. The key things you need to ask yourself before making a photo book are what is my budget? Am I going to make an expensive photo book or do I want to create something that's more affordable? Do I want something simple or something really special? Do you want just you know a basic photo book that any company can do for you or do you want something really handcrafted and nice one-of-a-kind book that shows your personality as well? How much does the print quality matter? And finally, what editor I'm going to use? Do I want something with fancy features that create a scrapbook like photo book or something very simple that you know any editor can do? Do I want an online and offline editor or do I want to make the photo book from my phone or on a desktop editor? If you get confused about the materials regarding photo books, so many companies offer swatch kits. I strongly urge you to buy one. In most cases, you can use the value of the swatch kit in your first order so it's not money last. I know that looking through hundreds of photo book company websites is time consuming but that's why I've wrote so many reviews and uh, top 10 videos to help you make these decisions and to help you compare photo book companies one to another. Number two, you can't polish a turd. Now this sentence is very true in the case of photographs. Don't be fooled by the idea that you can make a photo look much better just by choosing a more expensive book or a better print uh, technology. If your photo is low resolution, nothing's gonna make it better. You can't put pixels somewhere where there weren't any pixels. So you can see a picture here which shows the difference between a high res picture and the lower resolution picture. You can never enhance the resolution of a photo. I worked in a print shop for so many years and this was something that customers used to ask us all the time. Can you enhance the resolution of a picture? No, you can't. So if your photos are not great, don't waste your money on paying for the most expensive print or the most expensive book because it's not going to make it look better. In fact, it's going to look slightly worse because you have an amazing looking book with really bad quality pictures. So go for something cheaper, something more affordable. Number three, more expensive is not always better. Again, it's tempting to think that if you pay more, you're going to get a much better quality book. Now, of course, there is no doubt that high quality photo books are not going to be sold for pennies, but sometimes you see photo books which are 10 times the price of another one, and you have to ask yourself the question, is there really a difference of 10 times between the two books? The price of a photo book can be broken down into the following main uh, categories. You've got uh, fixed costs, you've got the price of the print, you've got the price of the paper and media used in it, you've got the binding, you've got labor, you've got marketing, and you've got the profits of the company. In most cases, the price of the print and the paper is going to be the smallest part of the cost. And most of the cost is either labor, if it's manual labor, it's going to be very expensive, it's marketing, and it's the profits for the company. So when you choose a very expensive book, the print quality might not be much better, but the presentation and the actual work going into it might make it more expensive or the marketing. Number four, organize your photos. It doesn't matter where you edit your photo book, you need to organize your photos. When starting your photo book in every editor, you have to import the photos that you want to use in the book. Now, if you do this on your smartphone, you don't want to scroll around thousands of pictures and pick the ones that you need for the actual photo book 
when all you could do is put all the pictures that you need into your favorites or into a separate album and just upload that one album. It's gonna make it so much easier to get your pictures organized and into a photo book. Again, the same if you are in a desktop editor, make sure to have your pictures ready in one folder so you can import them into the editor. Another thing I noticed, many of us are keeping our pictures now in the cloud, either Apple Photos or Google Photos. So many editors have problems extracting the photos from the cloud. I noticed this, so sometimes they pull the picture from the cloud, but it's gonna pull a lower resolution version of it, or it cannot find the picture at all. So what I did to fix this problem is I get all my pictures in photos into an album, and then I export the album with the highest possible resolution onto my desktop or into my documents and I upload the pictures from there. This is a bulletproof uh, method, you can't go wrong with it. Also, when you um, start editing your pictures, make sure you get some sort of order. So order them by date or by name, depending how you upload your pictures and always select the hide used photos um, option in the photos tab in your editor because it's going to show you just the pictures that have not already been used in the photo book and it makes it so much easier to look through all your pictures and put them into the book. Number five, pick a theme and be consistent. Photo books are little works of art, so a good visual uh, is, you know, half the success. Nothing kills visuals more than a messy, cluttered layout. So make sure to start with um, a pre-made book template and just drag your pictures in, or if you want to be creative and do it yourself, then try to stick with the designs that you have in the beginning of the book and be consistent all the way through with it. Also, it's a good idea to use a distinct font for the titles, another one for the subtitles, and another one for the main text box. And stick to these fonts all through the book. Don't change them too often. It keeps your book neat, tidy, and it's gonna look like a nicely designed work. Number six, space and the golden rule of three. So again, it comes down to visuals. When you're editing your photos, if a photo book is very cluttered, lots of photos in it, very crowded, or if there's too much free space, it's going to look like it's not being really thought through, or it's gonna be, you know, just not very attractive visually. So what I found is if you have, you know, very professional shoots, which you want to showcase in a full page layout, then definitely go for one page per photo, it's fine. But if you create like a mixed book style of book, something scrapbook like, then the golden rule of three is gonna work really well. What that means is that in any spread, which includes left and right side, on an average have three photos. And this rule is going to allow you to have your best shots shown on a full page uh, layout, but you can also show a lot more pictures which are less important or less good, like four or five on a page. But if you have this average, it means that you, your book is not overcrowded, but also you're using the space available in an efficient way. Always break down your events into volumes. I would rather have, if I have a big event where I have lots of photos, a very long holiday, I would rather put it into three photo books than try to crowd it all into one photo book. It's not going to look good. You can try to save on money, but making three shorter books uh, is going to make it look much, much better. So always go for the nicely laid out option as opposed to crowding everything into one. Number seven, info pages. Now this is something that not many of you do, but um, I really love info pages, especially for travel books, but even for baby books or wedding books, anything that's not really portfolio looking like. So if you have, again, your wedding pictures, it doesn't apply to it. If you want a flush mount album with, um, you know, one, two photos spread, you wouldn't do an info page and lots of text. But if you do a scrapbook like book, a travel book or something like that, you can see these designs on the screen now. And these are designs that I made for my photo books and now you can um, order them for yourself on the travel map creator, which I operate as part of the photo book guru website. And what these info pages are, they basically summarize your whole trip with either a map or a timeline, uh, lots of you know location specific uh, themes like um, flags and um, clip art from the location. It has the dates and uh, specific information about the trip. You can also do this for babies, like you know information about the baby's birth, the day, the weight, and so on. And you can do it for wedding on your wedding day. How many guests you had? Where was it held? And it's just a nice way to start a, a funky looking photo book with all the information about the event to come after. Number eight is memorabilia. This is again, not very common, 
but it can be a very nice idea. So in photo books, you can scan in things that you collected on your trips or uh, events. It can be uh, boarding passes, event tickets like concert tickets or museum tickets it can be subway cards it can be um, your child's um, handprint anything that you think is really important to the photos that um, they would accompany you can scan them in put them into the photo book and it's going to be a nice memory preserved number nine preview check preview i can't stress it enough how important it is to preview your project there is a preview button in every editor for a reason we all make mistakes. There's going to be, you know, a photo missing from a box. There's going to be a spelling mistake. You're going to miss out a word. You're going to misplace a box, anything. These things can always happen. It doesn't matter how many times you look through. Obviously, the more, the better. If you submit your photo book, there is no return. So once you make mistakes, it's going to be printed out and companies are more likely than not to not reprint your book if it was your fault. If they make a mistake by, you know, messing up the colors or anything like that, they will give you a free reprint, but if it's your fault, it's gonna be on you, so you will have to pay again. So again, use the preview function, make sure you look through your book before you order it, and when you're perfectly confident that it's all good, press the order button. And finally, number 10 is about volumes and series. Now, this is applicable to those of you who have many photo books or who want to have many photo books. Now, when you start making lots of photo books and you put them on the shelf, um, it might look a little bit weird if all of them are a different shape or a different size, different color. I know that many people like one of a kind things, but if you have any sort of OCD like I do, then you like your things to be organized and, you know, matching nicely in size, shape and in color. So what you can do is when you make your photo books, make sure you stick to a certain size and a certain shape and the text on the spines of the book could show the volume or the event and make sure it's always with the same um, font, the same text size. So when you put them nicely on the shelf, they're going to look like a beautiful collection, almost like 20 volumes of an encyclopedia. And one photo book company that does a really good job at this is Chatbooks. If you ever order Chatbooks, they have these series photo books which are printed automatically for you and you have on the spine the uh, time period from which the pictures were pulled from and th they all look the same, they have the same spine, the same size and when you put them next to each other it's a beautiful collection. I reprinted so many photo books in the past because I always found a nicer one and then I wanted all my other books to match it so uh, don't get into the same mistake. If you have the opportunity, try to settle on a size and the look before you start printing out 20 books. These were my 10 tips. Let me know if they were helpful or if you have any more questions, leave them in the comments box. I try to answer them. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Stay safe and see you soon.